to change sizes of any patches. So Yay. we're gonna we're gonna step it up a notch here. Okay. So th this is the quilt that we're gonna be doing in class today. It's, it's a cute, just a cute little one. Yes. It's got 36 piece triangle squares. Mm -hmm. I'll point it to show you. Show how you can make even a smaller one with your leftovers. You can make with your leftovers, you can make. Oh, there you go. Okay, this is what we're doing today. And then with your leftovers, you can make this quilt and this quilt. Oh. So if you're feeling really ambitious, this is what you can do. <laughs> Yeah. I know, I know, but that's pretty good. So those are some fun ones. These were like some leftovers that I had on my table. So just to give you a different color, this is more your color way, isn't it? Okay, and it's got a cute little, one of those um, Hoffman tiles on the back. Yeah, they come in a little pack. And just this last weekend, I was in um, West Palm Beach and we were doing the double wedding ring, and these are the cutaways. So this is just the leftovers I found in the trash. <laughs> definitely, definitely West Palm Beach colors. Yeah, it is the West Palm Beach colors, and I think it's, um, it was just fun to kind of do an offset. And I gave you pictures of all these quilts in your patterns as well. So those of you at home, um, you can download the pattern off of the website. All right, so it's not, it's not really a lot of technique, but I think it's fun. So in, in your kit today, you have 36 different light colors, okay? So it's really a wide variety. This is from my stash. And you have 36 different dark colors. This is all the stuff I had left over from when we did Farmer's Wife and Civil War Love Letters and all of that. So we're recycling that bit. Um, the first thing I'm having you do is I'm having you take all of your lights and just turn them on the back, and you're going to draw diagonal lines with them. We have these new rulers. I don't know if you've picked them up yet, but what it is, it's got Quilt in a Day on it with Eleanor's signature. I think um, Sue from Quilter's Paradise, you know, she does the laser. I think she did those for us. I hope she did, because now I'm saying that in public. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a diagonal line. You don't need very many tools for this project. And so... You, of course, will do all 36 because you do need all 36. And the reason I did all different varieties, because it seems that when you have, when you're trying to do a real scrappy quilt, if you don't um, have a lot of different fabrics, you always end up with the same ones next to each other, right? Okay, so I'm just going to do like three or four of these. Sue, what marker are you using? I'm using an IdentiPen. And the reason I really like the IdentiPen, because not only does it have the really thin tip on it, but you can use the other side that has a real thick tip to it. No, it doesn't bleed through, and it's not like, I think sometimes the Sharpies have a tendency to bleed on your fabric. Um, and I haven't had any trouble with this, and it dries really fast. And you can also write on rulers and things like that, and it won't smear. So I think that's a great benefit. All right, so the next thing you're going to do, once you got them all marked, you're going to look through your dark fabrics. And the key is, is to get as much contrast as you can. So if you had a light that wasn't really, you know, sort of like a, a darker light like this, you know, you can see the contrast there, but look how much contrast when you get like something that's like almost black. See, you have a lot more contrast. And the whole thing that's going to make this quilt work for you is the contrast, okay? Don't really look at colors, look at contrast. And I also think it's important if you had, there's one in here that's kind of red, a red, this little fern right here. This one, I would not match that with the red. Don't try and match the colors. What you want to do is you want to put that other red someplace else in your quilt because that kind of spreads your fabrics around. If you try and match color to color, you're going to start losing that scrappiness, okay? So those are just a few hints to do now, which one of the ones I marked. Okay. So I'll just pick like three different colors. Get rid of the rest. I have so many of those little squares sitting in my house right now. But it was kind of fun to use up my scraps. And to realize really how much fabric I do have in my house. I mean, this is just this kind of fabric. <laughs> it doesn't have to do with that other kind of fabric I have, right? 
Okay, and just check and make sure that you have your right sides together. That's going to be important. Okay, I have my quarter inch foot on, and I'm also going to be using a scant quarter inch because especially when you do very little things, you always want to have a scant quarter inch. So there's a little bar on my foot, and I'm just going to match that on my line that I drew. And you're just going to go down one side. And I assembly line, so I don't assembly line so more than about six of them because I find when I turn around and go the other way, they start getting all tangled up. So if you just stick it to six. And I see I haven't put my pivot foot on, but I'm going to put the automatic pivot so every time that I stop, my foot will go up. If you have that feature, it's great. If not, you're really handy at just lifting it up, right? <laughs> Okay, so down one side. When you get to the end, you just turn them all around, you're gonna go down the other side. Oops. And try not to get it stuck in your foot like that. I don't know what just happened, but I'm really glad it's on camera. I have no clue what just happened there, but that's okay. It's just all it won't hmm? It won't matter. I know. I think it's connected somewhere. Oh, there it is. It got stuck in the foot. And for some reason, it's not going very fast. I'm surprised because Eleanor was on this machine yesterday, and she still is very fast. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, I just turned it up. All right, so I'm just going to cut them apart. And hopefully, of course, there's not. The ruler's gone. Can you get me a six inch square up? Probably in the classroom, or just grab me one. All right, so now it's sewn. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut it on that drawn line. Thank you. It's funny because last night I was checking to make sure I had all my supplies here. Something happened in the night. I know, I know. So I'm just going to take these over to the ironing mat and I'm going to press all of my seam allowances to the dark side. Later on, we'll, we'll be repressing them, some of them, to the light side so that all of our seams lock, but we'll get to that. So you repress them, huh? Um, yes, because okay. I don't know where they're going to be placed yet. I, you know, I don't have, I haven't laid them out, so we'll just kind of go with that. I'm glad to hear that because that would be a lot of repressing. Yeah, depending on where it goes. Because <laughs> I do it wrong. So you should press All right. So to square it up, it's just really easy. We're going to square that up, and we always put the zero up in the upper right-hand corner if you're right-handed. Now, if you're left-handed, you would be going like this, with, you know, because you'd be cutting like this. But I'm right-handed, so I'm going to go like this. And before you cut anything, you want to make sure that your fabric goes at least to the two, okay? I don't want to make my first cut you know, cut that much off and then not have enough to get it squared up to two inches. So that's our magic number today is two for this size. Have you guys tried these new splash cutters? No. What's different about them? Oh, that's really fun. Let me, I'll square up the other side. So I've squared up this one side, and then I'm just going to put that right on my two-inch mark. Um, not for little things, I don't. And the reason I do not do use the triangle, six and a half inch triangle square up ruler for my little ones is because what I lose in that fold, if I square it up, then fold it open, could really make a difference in miniature quilts. Mm -hmm. I need to know exactly where I stand with that fold before I square it up. On larger things, yes, I do use it. Okay, so let me show you about this ruler, so, or cutter. So you know how sometimes when if you have like some other cutters and you take the, you're going to change your blade and you have all these little like screws and washers and stuff? Well, this one, you just turn it over and you just like that and it pops off. 
and see it, this is all connected, doesn't fall apart. And when you go to put it back together with your new blade, you just push it up. That's all there is to it. And it's very sharp. It's sharper than I've seen other blades. Hmm? Uh huh. You can use your blade sharpener. Except I usually, the reason I have to change blades is because I go over like a pin or something, and then blade sharpeners don't really work if you get those nicks in them. Well, they don't work for me anyway. All right, so that's just the, the basic things to squaring them up. Okay, now, if you were going to go ahead and do the really small quilt, where to go? It's in here. Okay, this little guy. What you would do, you would go ahead and square up your patch to two inches, okay? But then you're going to make an additional cut. And this is another thing I really like this little one inch ruler for. I would just lay it down here and I'm going to put it, I'll do it so Chris can see it. I'm going to put it and I'm going to cut it in half on the vertical and then in half on the horizontal. Okay, and then you're going to get this. Okay, so these are going to be one inches. And then you have, oh, look how that's perfectly centered almost. Oh. I didn't even plan that. Okay, so those are your little squares. And the little squares are what I use to make this little quilt. Okay, so when you started, and I had, um, when I did the, the piece triangle squares, you know, I cut it in half, right, in two. I'm just going to show you with these. Okay, I want you to put one aside, okay? Because really what you're going to do, since you have 36 of them, when you cut it in half, you're going to end up with 72 of these things. Okay, so put this aside so you keep one stack that you have 36 different combinations of your lights and your darks. Okay, and then you're at this stack that you set aside, you can go ahead and if you want to cut apart, um, you can make the little quilts or you could make another one bigger quilt just like you make, are making this time. Okay? But that's pretty tricky, isn't it? When I started doing this, I was trying to square it up, you know, bef without doing the two-inch square up and then just cutting it. And it was just, I was starting to waste fabric. So I thought, oh, that works really good. So that's your trick of the day. Okay. And we still sew those with a quarter-inch in? You're going to sew those with a quarter-inch in. However, so these are already pressed in place, right? But these are little enough you will need to go back and trim the seam back an eighth of an inch. And I did put that in your instructions just to remind you. Because it's going to, you can see how much percentage that seam is of your patch. Mm -hmm. It gets really bulky in there and it's just really hard to work with. You don't really need to trim back these ones though. Okay, so these have already been all squared up. Just for the sake of time. And I'm having you, um, I did the instructions just to do um, the main part in the center of your quilt. But you can, you saw that pink one that I did, you can off-scent it, you know, just to give it a little more whimsical look. Okay, so what I do, I start in the middle and lay them all out. And then I'm just going to build around it. And you can see how I'm matching light to light. Yeah, once you get them squared off, you're pretty much home free. And having the 36 different lights and darks, you don't really have to worry about matching things. That's why I gave you all those different fabrics. Now, that was my first thing I did just to complete this light circle that goes around. The next thing I'm going to do is now work on this dark circle. And the quilt that we're working on today is six by six. So now I'm just, after I do this, it's just going to be four by four. It's kind of fun to watch the pattern appear, isn't it? Uh -huh. So these are exactly the fabrics that you have in your little kit. I know it's kind of going out of your comfort zone for some of you to work in these fabrics, but you can do it. <laughs> or they'll make lovely gifts. 
They make lovely gifts. Yeah, I understood Joan ate some fabric yesterday. I had to get rid of it. There was just too much talk about what to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a label. It's, fa it's fiber. <laughs> it's one way to get fiber. Is that the pattern she had made? All right. I think it's a really curious. Are they talking out there? Uh -huh. I must have pulled this one from another kit. Uh -huh. so how many this total? looks like Judy Watermill stuff or something, are they? A lot of Joe Morton. Oh, uh -huh. And I met Joe Morton. <gasps> I was really excited. We were at an um, event in Pigeon Forge, oh. and they were introducing the teachers. And they, this lady stood up, and they said, and this is Joe Morton. I'm, oh, you're Joe Morton. And she's really, really nice. She's a very sweet. I love it when I meet these people that you hear the name of, and then they're just a kind person. So I thought that was pretty cool. OK, so there's the pattern. So when you look at, let's go to page, what page are we on? Four. Four. OK. So I did this little drawing for you. It looks very professional, doesn't it? And you'll notice that. On row four and on column four, you need to repress those seams so that it goes towards the light. And the reason you need to do that is because when I go to sew um, like this to here, if I was to put those together, both seams are going to be going in the same direction. The only one that you don't repress is going to be the one on four. And I put that in there. Is don't put the fourth row or column, the fourth piece of fabric patch. Okay? There's but just, no yeah, there's no error on it. And I kind of did it, do not do this in bold in your pattern. So that's the only trick to it. Um, basically, I just sew my rows together. Okay? And then once I do that, I press for my um, odd ones, I press away from number one. So these seams are going to go this way. And on the even rows, I press my seams that way. And you'll get a really, really good lock. OK? So I'm not really going to sew all this together. I think you, you can do that. But I do want to talk about some other things. Do 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 do. In my mess. I'm not going to throw it on the floor, though. Oh, that's a keeper. <laughs> yeah. I want to keep that. So I did, I did to give you a little picture of that pink one in case you want to get kind of modern. OK. Um, I just want to talk about if to make a four patch work really well. So if you want to take um, any four patches, and you're going to make this little pinwheel, this is just a, a, just a good hint for you guys. If you always put in the upper left-hand corner, if you always put the dark one going down into the left, OK, and then just place your other ones around it, when you sew it and turn it over, if you look at this picture in the bottom right here, your seams will always swirl and all in the same direction. You know how sometimes when you do these half your seams, like these seams might go one way, but then these seams go the other way? Yeah. The trick is to have this seam pressed down. So that's just a, a piecing technique that you can use and apply to other things. That's why I put that in there. So you have to press that against the, towards the light? Um, no, these are all pressed towards the dark. This is just making a pinwheel. Okay. If you place your seam going down on this first one that you place down in the upper left-hand side, then they're all going to circulate on the same motion, and the whole patch will be much flatter. Okay. You won't be fighting any seams at all. By starting with that dark one, mm -hmm. top left, mm -hmm. point it down. Okay. Yep. And you, you're funny, when you go and um, do some piecing of other things that you're working on, you'll notice that. You go, oh, yeah, if I put that over there, then I'm going to get a much nicer block. And that's going to make this intersection right in the middle be much truer. You know, and you won't have the overlap that you might have if you don't do that. Yeah, the picture, the one I did yesterday, it looks pretty good, doesn't it, in the picture? OK, the last thing I wanted to talk about was some math. 
And so I want to introduce, every time that we do these classes now, um, just a little bit of math on how to increase or decrease the sizes to make bigger or smaller blocks. Okay? So if you're going to make two-piece triangle squares, how you would determine, the first thing you need to do is you need to decide what your finish size block is going to be. Okay? Do you want a one-inch finish size, a two-inch finish size, or whatever? Okay? So in this case, I wanted to have a one-and-a-half-inch finish size. So if I'm just making two of them, I would need to add one inch to that finish size, and that's the size squares I'm going to start with. So since I wanted a one-and-a-half inch, I started with two-and-a-half-inch squares, and that's what you have in your kit. Now, the other thing you can do if you're going to be making a whole lot of them, you can start with making eight at a time. And to do that, the calculation for that is you take your one inch, one and a half inch finish size, you multiply it by two, okay, and then you add two inches. So in this case, for my patches that I'm using today, if I wanted to do that, I had one and a half inch times two, that would be three inches, right? And I would add two inches to that, and it would be five inch squares, and that's what I have. I have five inch squares. So let's say if you wanted to have two inch squares, finish squares, I'd go two times two, that would be four, and I'd add two inches, and that would be six inches. So then you would know what size large squares you'd need to make eight little triangles at a time. Pretty interesting, isn't it? I like the math. I did really good in geometry and math. So what you would do with these, you would, um, once you've got this sewn, and I, I took a picture of it, and I, I also wrote it out for you on the last page, but you would actually sew on both sides of your diagonally drawn lines on your big X, but you would need to first cut this piece on the horizontal and vertical line directly in the middle. So what's half of five inches? Two and a half. inches. Two and a half. Okay. So cut the horizontal and vertical first because your diagonals are like sewn, so they're not going to go anywhere. And then you're going to go back and sew. A little bit longer really would have been great, but we'll make do, right? Okay. If you don't cut directly on that line, you're going to be okay because your seams are already been established. So that's not going to really make any difference. Okay, so that's how you get eight of them. Okay. Is there any questions on the math? And then you could cut this down. You could cut the seam down if you're really working on something really tight. Right. Yeah. Once I get less than a one and a half inch finished square, I start cutting the seams down. I want to get rid of some of that bulk back there. Yeah. Like this one, you, I'd have more seam than I would anything else. And it'd just be a big lump. So anyway, so I'm going to tell you something different about every time about how to change sizes of your blocks, and then you can apply it if you have a special project in mind. All righty. Is there any questions? Fine. You can sew over in the future. Say you sew a quilt and the block is six inches square. Mm -hmm. You want to make them four inches. Are you going to go over that math later? On? Well, once I address all the different kinds of patches, like I'm going to do this one, I'm going to do geese, I'm going to do all different ones, then we'll start bringing blocks in, and we can apply all those little for the individual you know, piecing techniques to make that block. Oh, okay. We'll have that. Okay. So that's, I think it's going to be a great lesson yeah, for you guys. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, like I'm, that's why I wanted to do the triangles this time, because that's kind of like the really basic one. But we're going to do the geese one, we're, we're just all different kinds of things. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll get into really strange things. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like piece rectangles types and how you, you know, do that kind of math. And then you have like a little, and that's why I put it just on the back page so you'd always know where to find it. Okay. It references that size, mm -hmm. that kind of block. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. So that's Thank it. You. Thank you, Sue. Thank, Thank you. you.